Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to the Redline channel. As you can see, I am standing by the long-term 2018 Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. It's hard to believe that I took delivery of this car three months ago, and honestly, I wanted to do more update videos on this vehicle, but when you're traveling constantly over the last three months, filming, going to a lot of these manufacturer media drive events, it makes that a little bit difficult. Thankfully, I am home for the next month, so I thought it was time to do an update video on this car to give you guys um, some of my thoughts after three months of ownership. I have managed to put nearly 2,000 miles on it, at least in that time period. So to those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. This is the long-term Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. We also have a Tesla Model 3 Performance that's in the fleet, which I'll talk about for another video. The Tesla is not here right now because I had to send it to the Tesla store. More about that later. But for those of you who have been watching us for a long time, welcome back and let's get started with talking about how the Porsche has been holding up with over the last three months. As you can see, I finally got the permanent hard tags for the Cayman. This vehicle is registered in Delaware because that is where Redline is actually registered. We don't actually have a physical office in Delaware, but I'll give you a quick little walk around on the car. I am very used to white cars, but keeping this thing clean is definitely a challenge, especially those black wheels, which show dirt pretty much constantly. Another area where I noticed the red brake caliper actually will be covered in brake dust as well, so I have to wipe that off. Uh, the vehicle is low, but thankfully not as low as some other supercars or sports cars I've driven, so you don't really have to worry too much about scraping it. So as somebody who drives so many different makes and models for a living, driving a Porsche was something that was always new to me. I just honestly didn't have very much experience with this brand simply because they're so inaccessible to the majority of people. You really have to go to a dealership to drive one, which is kind of hard to do. And then Porsche doesn't really hand out press cars. So this Cayman GTS kind of represents my dream car, at least at this current stage of life. Uh, and I'm happy to say that after you know three months of ownership, Ownership, this thing still, I'm gonna basically spoil it, lives up to my dream hype. Now I wanna talk about a couple things really quickly right off the bat. Fuel economy, um, on the highway, this thing will easily surpass 25 miles per gallon. Like I just drove it, you know, 15, 20 miles uh, on this long high, highway trip. It's getting 26.4 miles to the gallon. And the one thing about this car that makes it so excellent, that kind of reminds you why it's a Porsche, is you can drive it you know, on the highway and leave it in its normal setting and it's so easy to drive. And the start stop in this vehicle, while it is a little bit strange, it doesn't really last quite as long as I'd like. And as soon as you lift your foot off the brake, it does restart, but again, you hear the engine start up even when it's in its quiet mode. And it just doesn't really befit a Porsche. So most of the times I just find myself turning it off, but just driving the thing in kind of day to day, everyday driving, the Cayman GTS, is such an easy sports car to drive. And this is after driving something like the McLaren 720S or 570, Mercedes AMG GTC, a Chevrolet Corvette. The Cayman is so much smaller, more manageable, not quite as low, and it's so easy to see out of. There's a reason why Porsche in general, you know, does so well in that regard. Is it's kind of like the everyday sports car. Now I am, of course, like anything that's this expensive, afraid someone's gonna scratch it, gonna nick it, but kind of like just driving the thing on my daily commute which I don't really have a daily commute mostly. I just kind of drive around and try to figure out how these cars drive. I'm just driving this thing on normal public roads. It is a very easy car to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what makes the Cayman so great. And you know what, when you're driving it normally, when you're, when you're disciplined with your right foot, it'll easily do 25 miles to the gallon. Now, when I'm driving it like a jerk, it will probably get right around 17, 16 miles to the gallon. So you kind of pay to play, of course, but the seats are, I find them to be extremely comfortable. These are the 18 way power adjustable seats with heated and cooled. The cooled function works really well. Haven't tried the heated function yet because it, it, we're, just, we're just approaching fall here in the DC area. So it's still relatively warm outside. But I wouldn't hesitate to take this car on a long road trip, you know, for hundreds of miles, for you know, hours and hours and hours. It'll get good gas miles while it's doing it. It has decent cargo room. Um, and it really, honestly, 
surprises me, continues to surprise me, put a huge smile on my face, and Porsche just really knows how to make an incredibly balanced sports car. But enough about just driving this thing normally. You guys are always excited to see my reactions to fast cars, so I'm gonna put the car into Sport Plus, and you can hear the transmission automatically downshifts, the la exhaust gets louder, it puts the suspension, the PASM, into its sport setting, so it's stiffer. <laughs> God, <laughs> the personality of this car changes. It's like night and day, it's incredible. Very little cars can pull this off and it's no surprise to me that Porsche is one of those brands. <laughs> God. <laughs> wow, this car is so insane. You know what, I just, you know, you guys just saw my video, if you haven't, of my of that McLaren 720S. There is something about this Porsche, even though it's my car, I know I'm gonna probably sound slightly bi bi biased, this is my car, but it's just almost as fast as the McLaren. Of course, it doesn't have that, you know, race car-like sound of its V8, but that flat four, that turbo flat four, has its own unique characteristic growl. I honestly never get tired of listening to it, except when I feel like, you know, having a really quiet interior, I'll put it back into its normal setting and put the exhaust into quiet mode. <laughs> this thing will even downshift to first, this PDK. I know some of you gave me crap for getting uh, the PDK and not getting the manual, but I have to say the transmission behaves like a wonderful automatic when you want it to. When you're stuck in traffic, it drives like a regular automatic. Yet, when you want to drive aggressively, all you stick shift lovers will fall in love with the way this transmission feels and the way it shifts because it shifts so quickly, it practically reads your mind. The paddles work well. It works so well in every mode that I put it in. It doesn't even have any of that typical, you know, dual clutch jittering that you get at low speeds. like. The McLaren 720S had a little bit of that, and that's why I said that it wasn't as good as the Porsche PDK. And the reason, there's obviously a reason for that. <laughs> wow, that's so incredible. <laughs> oh my God, I am so spoiled in this car, it's insane. I really wish that I could drive it more. <laughs> but when I do drive it, I have to say I enjoy every minute of this car. It is just an incredible car that spoils me rotten every every time, every chance I get behind the wheel. In fact, my new fiance will constantly take this car when I am traveling and drive it to work, even though he's got a Tesla Model 3 Performance to drive. And I don't blame him because as good as that Tesla is, which I'm gonna do a separate video kind of showcasing, showcasing which one is more fun to drive, which one I prefer driving, that's coming later on. Um, you miss the noise when you're in something like that. You just miss the visceral sounds, the mechanical feel. And being that this car is mid-engine, the way it feels when you're turning the wheel, no body lean, the steering is so sharp, it's so direct. It's just sublime. I cannot wait to take this car out to a racetrack, which I plan to do a couple of autocross um, events and maybe a race event before winter comes. It's just been really difficult with all my crazy travels. And honestly, even in its Sport Plus setting, with everything in its firmest setting, this car still is relatively daily drivable. I mean, sure, you notice that the suspension gets a little bit more firm, you feel the bumps come through, but the steering gets nice and heavy. It's still relatively livable. The exhaust, while it is loud, I actually really like it. Now, keep in mind, I know so many, so many of you are hating on the fact that this Boxer Flat 4 does not have the same noise as the Flat 6. And I'll be able to show you guys a, a 911 uh, Carrera S video soon. I'm gonna be tr swapping cars with a friend and colleague of mine who's got a, a 2015 Carrera S. I'll be sure to do a full video on that. Compare, of course, the feel, the differences, uh, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about that Flat 6 whale. But you know, the Flat 4 has its own unique characteristic growl. It doesn't sound bad, it just sounds different and there's nothing wrong with different. So the next thing I love about this car so much is the launch control. It is just so easy to access. All you have to do is just have the uh, drive mode here into Sport Sharp. You don't even have to turn off the stability control. Porsche lets you do that with just the stability control on, which is kind of the way I prefer it. Uh, but all you have to do is just come to a complete full stop. Put your foot hard on the brake. It'll say hold, floor the accelerator. 
<laughs> wow, and that's zero to 60 slingshotting you in basically, Porsche says 3.8 seconds, 3.9. I say it's closer to three and a half. <laughs> Things like a Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 is only just as quick as this car to 60. So, you know Porsche has definitely got something special on their hands. When a car like this, with only 365 horsepower, can get to 60 that quickly, you can credit the PDK, you can credit that lovely chassis where there's barely any wheel spin with this car. It grips the road so well for something that's mid-engine and puts the power down so well, you'd think this car was all-wheel drive. Uh, and really, there are times in the rain where I notice, of course, it'll remind you this is a rear-wheel drive car, which you shouldn't be driving like a jerk in the rain anyways, but... The Cayman 718 is just seriously the perfect sports car for those of you who can afford its price of entry. Now, that being said, no car is perfect, and I know a lot of you are probably wondering, what do I not like about this car? Well, at this price, at you know mid 90 grand the fact that my car does not have apple carplay is an insult it's hugely annoying how it doesn't have apple carplay uh it's like a 300 dollars option that the dealer just didn't choose to add when they built this car because remember i did not factory order my car i picked one up off the lot uh the pdk i do love it of course there's a stigma with the pdk people the enthusiasts keep giving me crap because i didn't get the manual which i don't really care this is the car that you know i purchased i picked the pdk because i wanted to try something different i could easily go back to a manual if i'd like um i don't like the fact that porsche does not offer a sunroof on this car uh, i kind of wish that they did i know that there's the boxster if you guys want a little bit more wind in your hair a little bit of light coming in but uh, the 911 offers a glass roof that opens i just wish that porsche offered the same thing on the cayman The tech in this car, while it is good, definitely feels like it's a little bit more dated when you look at vehicles like, you know, from Volvo, from, you know, Audis with their infotainment systems, um, Tesla, of course, having, you know, that big screen in the center. Uh, but again, that's not the purpose of a Porsche. Porsche, instead, what I appreciate so much about this brand is just the visceral, mechanical feel that you get. There's something so special about a Porsche. Uh, and there's a reason, you know, why it feels that way. You really have to drive one, you have to own one to kind of understand that. But, you know, as I said, no car is absolutely perfect. Um, but again, some of my complaints to this car are due to the fact that Porsche just likes to be jerks about, you know, charging an ass load of money for this car and not giving you a lot of standard features. And it is a little bit more of a flashier car. I definitely get a lot of people giving me the thumbs up or uh, a lot of more people trying to race me in this thing versus the Miata that I sold and traded to get rid of this or to, to get this vehicle. So it's not a car that's super subtle, but it is much more subtle than things like from McLaren, from Jag, for example, or Chevrolet Corvette. I feel like gets more attention perhaps. But as we go back here into the normal setting, and as I drive home, this is the beauty about this car. Put it back into its normal setting. The exhaust gets nice and quiet. The suspension gets a lot softer. The steering gets a lot lighter. And basically, once you've had a long day at work or at the office or whatever, or just plan to tail on long trips, you can put this thing into its comfort setting, normal setting, and it feels basically like a luxury car that's a little bit more sporty. And that is the whole reason why you bought something like this. But in case you guys are wondering what I have plans for the Porsche, in terms of mods, not really much. Uh, I was considering getting the windows tinted, but because this is a lease, I'm just not sure I want to spend the money to do it along with the clear bra on the front. Um, in terms of, you know, any, you know, performance driving events, I told you guys I'm going to be planning to take it to an autocross event soon, a race course, a race event, track event. So I'll be sure to get video on that. Um, I will be taking the car to Katie's Cars and Coffee this Saturday for the um, WAPA um, kind of takes over Cars and Coffee. So if you guys are in the area and you usually go to the Katie's Cars and Coffee event, feel free to come out. Um, I'll be there like by 6, 6 a.m. So kill me super early on a Saturday morning, but kind of worth it. Um, the Model 3 will not be there because it is still at the body shop uh, for the next week and a half where they've given me a Model S 70D, a 2016 or 2015 to drive for the week. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my uh, quick little update video on the 718 came in. Be sure to stay tuned. I will be doing more update videos on this car. I'll try to do one every month. Talk about any issues that come up. There have been no issues with the car reliability wise, which doesn't really surprise me. This thing is brand new. And if, and if it did, I'm kind of hoping it does so I can take it to the dealer, document it and get a loaner car to drive. <laughs> Although it's probably gonna come back to bite me in the ass later on. But anyways, 
I hope you guys have enjoyed. I will catch, thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to follow us on our social channels at Instagram, redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And if you guys are also looking to get some merch, I'll put a link in the description below. I did finally just add some redline merch apparel, um, a few shirts, um, t-shirts, hoodies, um, tanks, stuff like that. Um, it's kind of just an initial run with some of the new branding, which you guys will start seeing in the newer videos very soon. But uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you all have a great rest of your evening, afternoon. I'll catch you all in the next video.